Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes Everywhere Online. In today's video, I want to talk with you about something that I have noticed it seems to be a very popular, very hot topic among the quilting community right now on YouTube. I have seen come across my feed just literally dozens of newer videos with gobs and gobs of views uh, and the subject matter is scrap management. If you have made more than a couple of quilts you very quickly realize that you have some leftovers when you're done. Usually the leftovers are all kinds of different sizes and you might have like sort of a weird shaped piece of fabric left over and what do we do? We wind up putting that to the side and just sort of tossing things over to the side and they become our scraps. And there are videos on like how to organize your scraps and this involves like uh, color and cutting things into particular sizes, like the sizes that would match say uh, pre-cuts so that you have like things ready to go. So typically people will do like two and a half inch strips. They'll do two and a half inch squares. They'll do one and a half inch squares, all kinds of things like this. But what I'm seeing is that a lot of people are managing their scraps. They're maneuvering their scraps. They're like pulling them out of bags. They're sorting them, they're cutting them, they're doing this, they're doing that. And then they're just putting it into another tub. And some people uh, are telling me that they're not doing anything with their scraps. They just keep collecting them. So my situation is that I'm in a small space. And even though this room looks large, it is the largest room in the home. Uh, it's my sewing room. It's actually a living room. It has like no storage. I have no storage. So for me, I have to really manage what I bring into the home and how many supplies and fabrics and things like that that I'm accumulating uh, because I just, I don't have room. Seeing all of these videos about scrap management got me to thinking, hmm, I'm starting to develop some stuff. Let me go look through what I have. I have my things in a couple of places. I have them in some little sterite organizer bins, and then I have a couple of drawers in my crafting cart. And uh, let me just show you the bin. So this is what I'm using, and um, I don't know, it's maybe 16 inches by maybe six or eight across, so it's not huge. Uh, but what I did was I got these as a set of four from Home Depot, and I have two sets. And like in some of these, I have uh, like bits and pieces for projects. Like one of them, I call it uh, my chicken tub because it's all like chicken fabrics. Um, but this one was where I put bigger scraps. And it was just packed solid and I thought, well, I wonder what I can get out of that if I just start cutting it and making it into something. So a little bit about me is that uh, I don't like a lot of complicated stuff. Uh, my life is very complicated. It has a lot of complicated, uh, overwhelming things going on. And I personally do not want anything excessively difficult or complicated or overwhelming in any way in my sewing or quilting, crafting, whatever. I like things that are sort of uh, basic and to the point and that I can just enjoy. Truly, my sewing time is a way for me to uh, escape some of the the responsibilities that I have and some of the things that are, you know, o the overall concerns of life. We'll just put it that way. When I'm sewing, I can just sort of not worry about those things and just enjoy the process. So with that in mind, I didn't want to do a bunch of complicated scrap sorting and cutting things into all of these weird pieces and on and on and on. I just wanted something simple, something easy, and I wound up um, settling on the idea of, well, what if I did uh, a 16 patch square? And the way it really came about was when I, uh, I have a project, I don't know if it's going to be before, that video will probably go up after this video, uh, but what I did was I made three different center panels for a larger overall 
piece and one of them was a 16 patch and I just liked it so much I thought well I'm just going to make some more of those. And then once I got started with it I couldn't stop. I was really having a good time and uh, I am like three quarters of the way through to having enough blocks to make a queen sized quilt. It's kind of crazy and most of it I pulled out of this tub. And the tub is, I mean, it's still pretty full. It's, it's crazy to me how much I'm able to make just from these little bit of scraps. Now I also pulled a few things from my crafting cart. And uh, like one of the, the big things I did was I went to my Ruby Star drawer and I had a whole bunch of uh, leftovers from other quilting projects. And they were all, you know, smaller than fat quarters. And I thought, well, I'm gonna just go ahead and use that Ruby Star, because it's been here a while. It's already in several projects. Let me just go ahead and cut it down and use it to make these uh, blocks. So this is what they look like. And this particular block, you'll see me making this for you when we get into the demonstration part of the video today. Uh, I'm gonna make this one for you basically on camera and I love these they go together fast they're easy to make they're enjoyable to make uh, personally I like four patches I have talked with you frequently on this channel about how much I like four patches and when I am making my blocked designs whether it's my own or somebody else's project that I'm making I like to identify the four patch within the overall unit if it's there and construct everything around that. So in other words, what that means is instead of me doing a 16 patch where I go row, 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 I'll do quadrants. And so my construction will be the four quadrants and then put the four quadrants together to make the overall design. It just works better for me that way. I think it's an easier way to put things together. So uh, this is what I've been doing. And I will say as a tip, um, the most fun blocks, and I learned this as I was making them, uh, try to put a different fabric into each square. So uh, this is uh, 16 this is 16 different fabrics in one block, and those are the most fun. And when you start kind of laying them out to see how they look together, they look amazing. And yeah, love it. So as I said, this is a, a 16 inch block. So each of the squares are four inch squares. And that's a really nice size because it's not too big and it's not too small. And I found that with uh, cutting uh, using the, the four inch block or you're gonna cut it four and a half inches, it's a good size for fussy cutting. And like you can see here, the bicycle. So I was able to uh, fussy cut the bicycle out of that print, which I thought was really cute. And then over here, you can see that tree. I have other blocks that I did where the fussy cut is better on that. It's kind of a Christmas print, but it's like a Scandinavian Christmas. Uh, but I like it so much I put it in there. Uh, let me show let me show you another fussy cut sample. So that one's really special. That's uh, that bird print. And I think this is Sarah Watts design. And I had this as a fat quarter and it appears in a couple of projects. And I do have uh, some yardage of it, one or two yards, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's not the blue, I couldn't get the blue. The blue is like, that just went. So what I have is in black and it's, it's in stash. So what I wanted to do for this project was, uh, I only wanted to use scraps and off cuts. I didn't want to pull any back quarters or anything that I hadn't already used for something else. It had to be a true scrappy project. And, you know, one, it was, you know, a little bit of a challenge for myself to see what I could make. And then also, how far do these scraps go? I am 
just, uh, in all honesty, I am shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked at how many blocks I'm able to make just from the what's felt like and seemed like to me a small pile of offcuts and scraps. How much it's making, I, I'm blown away. So uh, what I'm going to do is to continue making these 16 patch blocks. I'd like, I, I find I can make like two a day. I mean, I could make more, but for me, it's my treat at the end of the day. And so when I'm done with the dinner and I've done the dishes and you know, done what I have to do at the end of the day, I can then take those uh, couple of hours and just enjoy myself uh, cutting and sewing. It's not planned, it's not structured, and I love it because you know, quilting is a very uh, structured hobby. It's exacting now, generally speaking. You can get into crazy quilts and chrome quilting and that type of thing and just, you know, do whatever, which is super fun. Uh, but generally speaking, it's a very structured, fairly rigorous um, hobby because you've got to have things fit perfectly. You want your seams to line up, you want your points to point, you know, all this kind of stuff. And usually there's a lot of um, time and attention that goes into the color design of a project and, you know, what are we going to use and, and what colors and values and da, 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 da. It goes on. It's a lot. With this, you're just going to reach in. You're going to grab some stuff. You're going to cut it to the size. I recommend the four and a half inch blocks. They're really fun to work with. Uh, just cut them. <laughs> now, if you are... Uh, swimming in uh, charm packs you could just sew a whole bunch of charm packs like what I would do if I was going to do it as charm packs I would just make like piles of four patches and then trim them down using uh, an eight and a half inch roller trim them down to an eight and a half inch square and then put your trimmed four patches together to make the 16 inch block. Or you can just like put them together and sew them all as a row. That is entirely up to you. But um, for me, when it comes time to construct that quilt top, I think it's uh, just light years easier to put big pieces together than trying to match up 20 seams in a long row. I, I don't enjoy that. We all have different ways that we like to work and construct and do things. And so uh, what I do here is present to you the ways that I like to do things. And it is a little bit different than what you see typically from other channels. And I think it's good to have another approach to doing the same thing because what I do is I always look for the easier method. What is the easiest way to put this together? And my brain is really good at taking a huge thing and breaking it down into smaller parts. I'm really good at that. And that is how I approach quilting. Okay, how can I break down this huge project into manageable bite-sized pieces? And that's kind of how this came to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put the camera back and then we'll just do like a little time lapse and I'm going to just lay out all of these blocks so that you can see what I've made over the last week. And you saw the size of the container that we're dealing with. It's not a big container and <laughs> I've got all this. So if you're somebody who has like got giant Rubbermaid bins just stacked full of fabrics, I am really going to encourage you to uh, your next project or like right now, you can do this as a side project because it's easy to do. Just pick a bin, any bin, start taking some stuff out and cut it down and just sew it because it's just sitting there and you will be amazed at how many projects you could pull from your older stuff. You don't even have to cut the new stuff. Just sew through some of the older stuff. I'm just giving you some ideas. That's what I do. I'm a big ideas person and I just like to come on here and give you 
a different perspective, a different look, and that type of thing. Okay, so that's it. Get into your scraps. Just don't let them sit there anymore. I promise you, you will enjoy this. It's really fun. It's freeing. And you won't have that mountain of stuff facing you. I, personally, when I've got mountains and mountains of stuff and it's just spilling out of the drawers, which is what's happening on the crafting cart, it's just starting to spill out of the drawers. And that's enough. <laughs> it's just enough. So... I had to start uh, whittling that down. My stress level will come down as I better manage the bits and pieces and the clutter of everything. So anyway, it might help you too. So, uh, all right, I'm going to uh, set the camera back. We're gonna do a time lapse and I'm just gonna lay out the blocks just so you can see them. I just want you to see them. And then we'll reconvene at the table and I'll just show you real quick how I'm putting them together. And I hope you'll enjoy it. And uh, okay, let's uh, let's do that little music montage. That's 15 blocks. One more and I've got 16. And that is a perfect throw size. Quote. Okay, so this is the uh, setup that I've been using to make all my blocks. And what I did was on this side, I just cut all of my squares. And what I try to do is to have like 16 different things. Right now I'm short on three, so. Uh, after this, I'll have to cut some more fabric just to add to the piles. I just found it was more fun if I had a different uh, print or color or whatever in each uh, block, and I need 16 total. So uh, I just found if I could cut 16 different piles of things and put them here and then pull from them and make uh, the, the design that I wanted. And this is like true scrappy. I'm not like planning any of it. I'm just, you know, grabbing some stuff, cutting it. Like uh, I might say to myself, well, I think I need a little more green or I need a little more yellow, whatever, you know, and just pick through the scraps and find what I have. Anyway, that's where I put the uh, pieces that I use to construct. And then over here, I just lay out the blocks into a 16 patch. So I just uh, lay them out into uh, four, four patches essentially and sew them together. So what I would do uh, to construct is to chain piece all the way down here and all the way down here, um, press them. And what I will do is to have the seams going in opposite directions within each of the four patches. And so everything will nest. And that's like step one, is to get the four patches made and have the seams going um, the different directions. And then I will join them. And when I join them along the center seam, I will press that one open. And when I have all of my four patches together, uh, then what I'll generally do is to join the top join the bottoms and again I would press these seams open and then put the top to the bottom and then you have your completed block so uh, let me just kind of put this one together and I'll show you how it looks okay I've got my series of four four patches constructed and what I'm going to do now is to put those two together and then I'm going to put these two together and that will be the two halves and then we'll come back and join them and we'll have a completed block. It goes together just that fast. I'm ready to sew my last seam joining the top and the bottom and what I wanted to say before I did that was that uh, when I do a longer seam like this I will uh, use pins to secure and I always start in the middle and make sure the center seam lines up and then I'll do these um, other two seams because you've got one, two, three seams to, to match in this uh, particular um, block. 
and I like you know to have it match as, as best as possible. So I just find on a longer on a longer row of sewing, the pins will just secure it a little bit better. So that's just what I do. Okay, let me uh, get that last seam put in and we'll come back and take a look at the finished block. Okay, here's our completed block. And you can see once you put everything together, I mean, it is really fun. It just, I think they all look good and they look the best when you can have a different uh, fabric in each block. I also want to say that I love this particular size, uh, the, the four inch blocks, because it gives you room to fussy cut. And I fussy cut um, bicycles and I've used those in several blocks. And I think that's fun. Let's turn it over and I'll show you the back. So um, you can see like all of these seams are nested and then where the four patches are joined everything is pressed open and i just feel like that's a really neat presentation on the back of the work and uh, the the block itself does lay pretty flat so there it is there's your finished 16 inch scrappy patchwork block <laughs> 